horse here named Annabelle. Annabelle's also a little western horse, I believe. And let's talk about her conformation a little bit and what, what we're going to do as far as evaluating what we see here. We watched her walk in. Annabelle's got a little bit of an issue. Uh, it's a little bit of a vet issue. She has a, a abscess in the right front foot that's busted out the coronary. It's already been evaluated by the veterinarian and the vet has uh, diagnosed it and recommended that we put a shoe on it to protect the area where the uh, sand pocket or rock or stone went through. But let's talk about her conformation. Let's look at her from the, from the front, the shoulder. We're going to bisect that foot and we're going to draw a line from the shoulder down through the knee, through the cannon bone, through the pasture, and then bisect the foot. That's what we're looking at. Where is this knee in relationship to the shoulder? She's pretty, pretty fair conformation on this leg, bisecting the foot that way. Now right, we're going to look at this limb from the side. This would be the humerus. This is the knee. This is the cannon bone. This is her ankle. This is the pastern. So we're going, to, we're going to draw a line down about 3 eighths of an inch to half inch behind that cannon bone, this being the cannon bone. We're going to drop that line down and see where her heel is in relationship to this mark here. It's back behind the front of the cannon bone, about a half inch. So we can see either heels are run forward, she's flared quite a bit. Uh, other than that, the limb is balanced pretty good. She could use some help with some heel support. Now, because this abscess is broke out here, I'm going to be a little careful not to squeeze this with my knee. I'm going to try to stay away from that. As I said before, this mare has already been evaluated, looked at by a veterinarian, and he diagnosed it. So we're just going to try to get something on here to protect that area and this I think is probably where the issue is maybe the vet took a little pressure off of there we're going to try to unload this completely I'm not going to take a whole lot out here this is a, a bit of an upright foot which sometimes will have a, a thinner sole in this area they have more heel I'm defining the bars a little bit I'm just going to barely dress that frog. All right, using this diamond loop knife, all I'm doing is cleaning it up. I'm not taking a lot out, just defining the bottom of that foot a little bit. That's all. Staying away from this. I'm going to take a little tiny cut on this just to open it up. I think this is going all the way up and exiting out the front of that lateral toe quarter. You can see it's inside the white line. This white line is stretched this much should be tight and I can feel a flare on this side of the foot. So I'm just going to do a little bit of a trim. There's not a lot of foot to come off of here. A lot of the dressing I'll do will be on the outside of the foot. As I talked before, this heel was forward just about a quarter of an inch or so. That'll come back with my Bellotta Rasp. mare's barefoot. This is all normal. Within a shoeing or two you can have this foot nicely balanced, supported, and fit. An upright foot or a club type foot, a, a grade one club, very similar to this, a lot of hoof wall out here, a lot of stretching of the white line. Uh, I try to get as much of this off from this position as possible. I'm just looking at the center of this frog and I'm going to try to make that foot within reason be symmetrical around that.
we're hoping that getting a shoe on here and unloading this foot is going to help her stand better. But once you have an abscess, go out and bust the coronary. A lot of times that that coronary being split, and we'll show you that from the front, will pinch as the horse bears weight. So that adds some issues also. I'm just going to clean this up. We're going to put some copper sulfate in this to fill it up before we put our shoe on to try to keep most of that bacteria and fungus from turning into something else. Even though this is separated here in the toe, I still believe that most of the problem is this, this, this right here. All right, I, I trimmed that foot while I was underneath of it and I used my rasp to rasp some of this flare off that was here that I pointed out. Now I'm gonna pick that foot up and I'm gonna dress this foot down to, uh, to kind of mimic the coronary. You can see what I told you from underneath. There's the abscess that came out and see how that moves. And I believe when these horses, once they break out like that and the horse bears weight, we'll make her bear weight, I'll lift the other foot off and you can see how much pressure that puts on that coronary. And I think this is a big pain response. So we're not gonna get 100% relief by just protecting the bottom because now this is our pain area up here. But it's still our responsibility to balance that foot and get a shoe on it to protect more debris from coming up from the bottom. Get a big stretch out over there. This is our Bellata top level rasp. It's, uh, my rasp of choice right now. And I guess I should show you how much of a gap there is. I don't know if this is going to show on the video or not. Underneath can see a gap underneath of there. I'm going to dress that down and try to get it a bit more flat to mimic what we have on this side. Didn't take much dressing there, but I'm going to take this off. As I sight this foot from this position right here, now I'm seeing more symmetry to the bottom that kind of mimics that coronary band. As I pointed out before, this horse has a lot of wall and a lot of thickening of the wall and the white line. All right, this is, horse is a trail horse, so I've got some diamond trackers, which is not only a good shoe for a trail horse for traction, but because of her abscess, it's gonna give some breakover, pretty much from heel to heel. You can see this is right out of the box. It has got a taper to it. So it's gonna allow breakover almost 300 degrees around that foot. So I got two sizes here, let's see. She's got a very nice symmetrical foot. So we'll look at a one, and that's, that's way too much heel, you can see underneath. Although it fits her perimeter perfect, just a bit too much heel for a trail horse that's gonna be going up and down hills. And so we've got a knot, which is ample. We're gonna have to spread this a little bit and uh, work on our heels just a tiny bit but that's going to fit this foot just perfectly. Now you can see since I've dressed this foot from the outside, I've tried to get the same thickness of the wall all the way around. And uh, I think I achieved that pretty well. So let's shape this shoe to fit this foot. All right. What I try to do is I try to look at my my heel distance from this heel to the bulb, this heel to the bulb. I don't like to quarter turn my shoes like that. 
I really like it when my heels can end up being the same distance and allowing this foot to still clean to have the enough frog out of there so that that foot can self clean itself so I like this foot or this fit I'm just gonna clean it up on the grinder a little bit and we'll nail it on and clench it we'll put some CS in these voids we'll pack it really good with that it'll be an antibiotic and a filler also to keep the dirt and debris out of there so I've I've shaped this shoe and I and I hit it on the grinder not so much to do a lot of scotching but I want to show you how much bevel there is on this tracker shoe to the outside to allow for so much breakover especially on this foot I mean you've got the traction you've got the rim for traction but this breakover is going to be very beneficial to this mare I'm going to take a little bit of this off of this sole because I don't want any sole pressure. You can see that with the burn. If I wouldn't have burned it, we wouldn't see that. We might have nailed that shoe on and caused a little pressure point. We don't want to do that. So here's our CS Plus Foot Pro Hoof Clay. We're going to fill this first. This is the area I think where the insult was. With this void from the CD toe here, we're going to pack that really full. Antibiotic properties. You want to pack the foot with something that has a little bit of an antibiotic property to it to try to discourage any more bacteria and fungi to grow there. And don't be afraid to push on it and push it up inside that area as much as you can. The clay is very forgiving. It's not going to be so much that it's going to cause a pressure. But this is really good stuff. because that abscess and that coronary, which is where my knee's heading here, is not going to be real comfortable for this mare, the nailing process. I've got the right front nailed on with two nails. She's, uh, she's very sensitive. The coronary is, is busted open where the abscess came out. So we've got two nails in it now. She's standing on it. Uh, we need to let her adjust to that. So I'm going to trim on this left front a little bit and let her get used to the right front. A lot of foot here also and a lot of flare so it'll take a little work to to get this down we're not going to get real aggressive she's been barefoot for quite a while we're not going to do a whole lot in this sole we're just going to define it a little bit see where everything is at see where our bars are at just clean the frog up a bit here and there I love the loop knife for that purpose, the diamond loop knife.
take a little run with our nippers. I'm going to take mostly toe off this first run. And this wall is so thick on this foot, after I rasp it a little bit, I'm going to use my nippers to define where I'm going to rasp the outside of the foot to bring it back to. This is the bigger foot, like I talked about. This foot's been bearing a lot of weight, probably for a good week or two. That's a lot of foot there, so I'm just going to take my nippers and define where I want to rasp that foot back to rather than rasp on it in here. You can see it's already trying, Mother Nature's trying to break it off there. I'm going to come on around do the same thing on this side. She has a bit of a toe crack exposed and then a big flare here. So we see this flare here. I'm going to also take some of that off. Saves a little bit of rasping. And all we did was by nipping that was try to bring this foot back into perspective with all the flares that's going on. I'll do a little bit more rasping on here. I want to bring the heels back just a little bit more. But I don't want to make her too uncomfortable on that other foot. at these points here, the high wide part of the frog. So I'm pretty close. We can make up the difference in that in the shoe fit. Not about that, I should have drove one with it. All right, we've got both of these shoes nailed on. The uh, left front, as we stated before, 
was the one that's the flared and the widest it's carrying the weight off of the right front uh, the right front's the one that has the abscess lateral toe abscess but they didn't finish up too bad pretty happy with them and she's bearing weight okay on that right front she still needs some attention some uh, antiseptic creams or something on that crack the abscess where it came out of the front but likewise the hot the lateral view on these I think turned out really really well Look faster in alignment. Our heels. Better with the with that much support. It's not length, it's just support. Uh, that's a personal preference thing on how much you want to give or take away. It's a trail horse, so we don't want too much more. So I'm very happy with how this turned out. We're going to trim the back feet now. We're not going to shoe them. We're just going to trim them. Have a look at them. Try to get some some symmetry to them. Again, I don't get aggressive. I'm not going to take that much of that sole out of there. There was actually a stone stuck right there that just popped out. We'll find the bars. Just to find them a little bit. I don't believe we should take off any more sole and lengthen we have to. I'll just crisp this frog up a little bit on each side. Again, the loop knife makes it very, very simple. Take that little flap off the top. That's enough. We've already evaluated our balance and what we're going to do there. So let's just make a little nipper run now. Not too much. She's pretty flat footed. We want to get rid of these flares and what I call spikes sticking out the side. And round this foot up to make it function more properly. This rasp is very sharp. With a sharp rasp you can take off a lot of foot fast. But we want to get rid of this and this. And the foot starts to take shape. Of course it's going to be barefoot in the back so we don't want a sharp edge. We want to round this edge up as much as possible. We don't want it chipping, breaking off more. We just want to round it up. There's a little dirt in this. I'm not going to cut it out, but I just want to clean it out. And you can see there's rocks right there. That's a rock that came out of that. That would push right on up into that white line. Probably caused another abscess, possibly. Let's just see how far it does go. I'll use a nail to clean it out rather than cut it and make it bigger than what it needs to be. All right, we're lucky it ends right there. But even though the horse is going to be barefoot, I'm going to go ahead and put some CU in it. And then there's a better chance of keeping some of that rock and debris out of there. Push it as hard as you can, get it up in there. We've rounded up the edges. We haven't cleaned the outside yet, but we'll do that. these videos we're doing this to show you how we deal with problems it doesn't mean every foot that you do has to be the same as we do it we're just showing you how we deal with an issue confirmation problems that arise being able to work well with the veterinarian 
and to be the best part of the team that you can be. Okay.